What's going on, guys? Um, I just kind of wanted to report back. Uh, you know if you've been watching, I picked these stones up here, these Veneve resin bonded stones up maybe, I don't know, two months ago or so. And I've been using them, both of these knives here, <clears throat> this uh, Emerson CQC8 in um, 154CM has been sharpened on these stones, as well as this knife here, this Endura, this Endura, excuse me, Spyderco Endura, in um, K390 has also been sharpened on these stones. I also sharpened an S, not S30V Endura on these stones and maybe another knife or two. Uh, I do have here, these are the only stones I've used. I do have the, man, I think it's 1200 and 2000 grit as well, but I haven't lapped those stones and they suggest that you lap the 2000 side uh, and I have not done that. So what I have here, and I'll try to hold it so you guys can see it, Hopefully that's coming out on camera. But here I have the uh, 100 and the 240 grit stone. And you can see I've used them. There are some stains on here. I think I got something on there. Don't worry about that. Uh, and I have the 800 and the, I'm gonna forget now. This is the eight, 400 and the 800. And hopefully you can see that there. This here, this brownish color, that is just the Nagura stone that I've been using to clean these off. That is one of the first things I'll get into. Because these are not very porous, um, they tend to load up fairly fairly quickly. I haven't had any trouble with that. They still cut pretty well. Uh, you know, a few seconds with the Nagura stone, not only do you kind of knock off the buildup, but you also kind of refresh the stone just a little bit. And I, I have not done anything to these stones, and they're still pretty flat. I've sharpened, I've sharpened this knife twice, and I've sharpened this knife once or twice. I sharpened the S30V Endura once, and like I said, maybe I sharpened one or two other knives. I haven't done anything to these stones. They're still very flat. As I'm running that Nagura stone over these stones, it, I still get that suction that you get from two very flat surfaces meeting it with a, a liquid in between the two. Uh, what I have noticed is the stones don't follow your typical, uh, they, they don't give you the finish you would expect out of your typical um, grits. Like if I told you that this was a, you can see it here, this is, it's going to look probably like a mirror on the camera, but it's pretty close to a mirror finish. If I told you that this was off of this 800 grit stone, you would probably look at me like I was insane, but it is, it's off of this 800 grit stone. I did the 100, no, yeah, 100, 240, 400 and 800. And then I did a one micron leather strop. And this is the finish that you get. And this is 154 CM. Uh, it came up very sharp. Uh, it, it, it cut the steel very well. Obviously, this is not a very high carbide steel, so it shouldn't give you a lot of trouble since these are diamond stones um, or, again, synthetic diamond stones because I know that for whatever reason that causes an issue when I say that in videos. People, you know, comment on that. Uh, this also, same exact process, and you can see, once again, that finish is very close to a mirror finish. It probably comes across on video as a mirror finish. It, again, it came up very sharp and this is a high carbide steel. Uh, it cut the steel very efficiently and effectively. It came up very uh, sharp. I, I had zero issues with the stones. Um, neither one of these, I think this one probably loaded up a little bit more, but again, this is a little less wear resistant, uh, less carbide, so it's it's gonna cut a little bit faster. So I did have a little more buildup, but not, not a big deal. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything that really stood out. These are just splash and go. You don't have to soak these stones or anything, which was a, a big plus to me. Now I did find that the, especially these stones here, the uh, 400 and the 800, they do absorb a little bit of water. Um, these do as well, but these absorb a little bit more. Like if you put some water on the surface and then you allow it to sit for three or four minutes, you will see that water absorb into the stone. Uh, here, they just change colors. They don't, it doesn't really absorb into the stone as much, but it, it's still not a soaking stone. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. 
they've been really good stones. They've cut really well. They've stayed flat. Uh, the buildup is easy to knock off. They're easy to lap. These are the upgraded series, so there is a little bit more um, matrix here, uh, you know, synthetic diamond matrix. I wanted that because I wanted my stones to last a little bit longer, but I, I these stones will last me a long, long time. Uh, and, and that was one of the other benefits of going with something like this over your traditional diamond plate stones. I can continually lap this and as long as there is a substrate here, I'm always going to have some type of a surface that will cut the steel that I want to cut. Whereas if you use a traditional diamond plate, you're going to you're going to wear those diamonds down and or rip them out and it's just after a while you're going to need new plates and this, you know, that's not a big deal. Those are just the trade-offs. I think these stones were uh, $180 a piece right around there. Um, so you figure that's about $90 per side if you want to do the math. And if you are buying something like a DMT or an Atoma, I mean, you're, you're going to be what about three quarters of that price or so, you know, about a hundred, 120, somewhere in that ballpark. So, I mean, it, it kind of just depends on what you want to do, but I've been very happy with these stones. They work very well for me. They've given me very good results. Uh, the one thing I will mention, and this was mentioned to me as well, the these stones here, the finer you go, the easier it is to possibly gouge the stone. So you always want to be monitoring the pressure that you use. For me, it wasn't the pressure. I just got a little bit carried away and the tip, kind of the angle of the tip on the stone, it dug into the stone just a little bit. So that, that would be one other uh, possible negative or something to look out for if you're going to use these stones. You don't have uh, something that's just a, a steel substrate that you can kind of bang into and you're not going to damage it. Uh, I did also, I don't remember which stone it was, but I hit one of these on the sink. Oh yeah, you can see it right here. I hit one of these on the sink and it did take a little chip out of the edge. I hit it pretty hard, but it still withstood it pretty well. Um, so you have to be a little bit more careful with these stones and that's just, that's my fault. I really need to, um, just look after them a little bit better. They really should be back in their cases. I've kind of had them sitting out because again, when you wet them, they stay wet for a little bit. So I, I had them air drying and I was using them pretty much daily for a while. So I had them sitting out, but I need to put them back in their cases. So that way they're a little bit more protected, but uh, they're definitely stones that I have enjoyed and I'm okay with the trade-offs, but again, that's going to be up to you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Remember, a lazy man carries a dull knife and don't be a dumb person with a sword.